Inside of Auschwitz, the largest concentration camp set up during the Second World War by the SS, there were many different torture and execution methods used to bring suffering and the demise of the prisoners. There were many male and female guards who worked at the camp, and some women, such as Irma Grazer, would be known for their torture and murderous antics, which resulted in the horrors of the camp. At the end of the war, a number of these guards were condemned for their war crimes, but one man who was known for being the Tiger of Auschwitz, and a man who would invent new torture techniques to inflict suffering, was Wilhelm Friedrich Bogar. He was a man who would never be sent to the hangman's noose for his crimes, but he was convicted of 114 counts of murder, and 1,000 counts of accessory to murder. He was a man who was very lucky to escape execution, but why was he so feared, and what did he do inside of Auschwitz? Join us today as we look at the horrific torture of the Tiger of Auschwitz, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Wilhelm Boger was born on the 19th of December 1906 near to Stuttgart. He was the son of a merchant, but as a young man he joined the Hitler Youth, and this was a youth group for teenage boys, where they would be trained in how to become soldiers. Hitler hoped that one day he would have a force from the Hitler Youth, who would lay their lives down for his empire, and he would get this at the end of the Second World War, as many young boys were fighting on the streets of Berlin in the final days of the conflict. But Wilhelm Boger, after he finished high school, worked with his father as a merchant, and he did this for a number of years before he then worked inside of an office. It was not the start in life you would expect for one of the Second World War's worst war criminals and sadistic torturers. But like the Commandant of Auschwitz, Rudolf Hess, Boger was drawn to the Ottoman League, a group which promoted Germans getting back to the land and stood against industrialism. Boger then in 1929 joined the Nazi party as the policies of Hitler and what his government were promising appealed to him, and he then joined the SS in 1930, a year later. The SS would later become run by Heinrich Himmler, and at this time it was not the most powerful, and by 1930 they had just over around 1,000 men. But Himmler, when he seized control of the SS, would instigate stricter rules for those men who joined up, and he would turn the paramilitary group into the most powerful organisation in Germany, one of the most feared branches of the Nazi party. It was at the time subordinate to the SA Hitler's brown shirts, but they would later usurp the SA in their power. Wilhelm Boger, following losing his job in 1932, then became a member of the auxiliary police force, and then the political police, before he then attended further training. But he was a man who, during his police career, was known for mistreating those who he had arrested. He was made a police commissioner, however in 1936 he was actually arrested himself, with regards to an incident in which he had mistreated and brutalised a prisoner who he was meant to be interrogating. It would be this sort of behaviour which Bogart applied to his later work inside of the concentration camps, and it was clear he was a man who was very violent. But as the Second World War broke out, Boger was working inside of the state police head offices, and he was later involved in setting up Nazi police stations in Poland following the invasion. The Nazis would round up people in occupied areas, they would then be sent to these stations to be tortured and interrogated by men such as Bogar. But then he was called to the front lines, and he served as part of the 2nd SS and Police Engineer Reserve Unit, and in 1942 he was wounded in battle. Like many SS men who were wounded on the front lines, they were never returned to fighting and the conflict, but instead were sent to work inside of concentration camps. Wilhelm Boger was sent to Auschwitz, and it was inside of the deadly concentration camp where Boger would make his name for torture. Whilst at the site, he was in charge of keeping records and also admitting prisoners, but he would also oversee the camp's security and conduct barbaric interrogations. Inside of Auschwitz, for the camp to function with efficiency and to keep the prisoners incredibly submissive to their guards, the Nazis used many terror tactics to do this. They executed prisoners in public in front of thousands of other inmates to strike fear into their hearts, and many of these condemned had only slightly infringed on the rules, such as stealing food to just survive. There was a block known for torture inside of Auschwitz, and this was Block 11. Inside here, guards such as Boger worked, and Block 11 was known for its torture, as there were standing cells inside of this block, where prisoners were locked into small tiny dungeons for days on end. Also here, the windows had been bricked up or covered, 
meaning no one could see the horror which was going on, and prisoners slept on the bare floor. They were locked in dark cells for a long time. Interrogations were usually brutal and barbaric, and medieval-style torture such as the manacles would be used, and Wilhelm Boger became known for his use of torture on the inmates. He gained the nickname for this, the Tiger of Auschwitz. From the 23rd of December 1943, he was a leader of the section of investigations and interrogations, meaning it was Boger himself who would beat and interrogate with horror. He was a man who would use violence onto the inmates to force them to admit to crimes that many had no idea what had happened. But Wilhelm Boger left his mark on Auschwitz, and in particular he invented a torture method known as a Boger swing, named after him. His former secretary would report on this that it was a metre-long iron bar suspended by chains hung from the ceiling. The prisoner would be brought in for questioning, stripped naked and bent over the bar, wrists manacled to ankles. A guard on one side would shove him or her across the chamber in a long, slow arc, while Boga would ask the questions, at first quietly, then barking them out, and at last bellowing. At each return, another guard, armed with a crowbar, would smash the victim across the buttocks. As the swinging went on and on, and the wailing victim fainted, was revived, only to faint howling again, the blows continued, until only a mass of bleeding pulp hung before their eyes. Most perished from the ordeal, some sooner, some later. In the end, a sack of bones and flayed flesh and fat were swept along the shambles of that concrete floor to be dragged away. It was complete horror and brutality, and many died from their torture at the hands of the Tiger of Auschwitz. He remained at Auschwitz until the camp was liberated, but it's not known what he did until the day he was captured by American police on the 19th of June 1945. He may have gone to live with his parents, however Wilhelm Boger managed to escape his imprisonment in November 1946, and he slipped under the radar and worked as a farm worker. If he had not ran off, then it's most probable that he would have been executed for his crimes, alongside other guards of Auschwitz such as Rudolf Hess, Josef Kramer, Emma Grazer and others. But Boger continued to live a normal life at the end of the war, and he even lived with family under his real name and worked inside of an aircraft factory. But in October 1958, he was arrested at the age of 51. He had lived a quiet life, but when his neighbours and friends asked of his work during the war under Tauschwitz, he would lie. However, Boger passed the denazification programmes, and it was said with this that, he does not leave the impression of a raw, brutal man, but one of a more rational, well-schooled police commissioner and civil servant. But the investigation into him came to a brief end, as the cost was said to have been too much for the government. But then in 1959, Wilhelm Boger's time would be up, and he was arrested for a final time, and he was then charged with war crimes he had committed inside of Auschwitz. He was part of the Frankfurt Auschwitz trials, and a number of eyewitnesses came forward, and they spoke about his crimes and the torture he had inflicted, and because of this, Wilhelm Boger was sentenced to life imprisonment, and also hard labour, for the murder of at least 114 people, and he was said to have been an accessory to murder in around 1,000 cases. He claimed in the courtroom that, during the National Socialist regime, the only point of view for me was to carry out the orders given by my superiors without restriction. I was sent to Auschwitz through no fault of my own. I don't want to refer to it. Today I see that the idea I clung to was ruinous and wrong. I don't want to sugarcoat anything. I want to leave no doubt that the tightened interrogations as ordered were carried out by me. At the time, however, the focus of my reflections was not on Auschwitz, as a cruel place of extermination of European Jewry, but solely on combating the Polish resistance movement and Bolshevism. Wilhelm Boga admitted that Nazism had been a huge part of his life and that this was wrong, and he spoke down against his own actions. But he would remain in prison for the rest of his life, as the Tiger of Auschwitz died inside of a prison in Bittgeheim, Bissingen, on the 3rd of April 1977, and he had spent the last 18 years of his life without any freedom. He was a man who, inside the deadliest concentration camp of the Second World War, inflicted a huge amount of pain and suffering onto the inmates, and if he had not escaped his capture earlier, then he would have certainly been executed. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.